Hey, welcome! Today we're going to have a look at another interesting piece of technology related to AI and this time it is an app called Artemis. So I shouldn't really call it an app because in fact it is a machine learning model and a data set and what it does is that provided an image whether it's you know painting or a photograph or some other form of visual content, it will predict what type of an emotion this particular visual content may produce. And on top of that, it's gonna give us an explanation, a written explanation of why that particular choice was being made. So to quickly demonstrate to you what it actually does, uh, I'm gonna do a quick search uh, in Artemis. I'm gonna look for a word sausage. And what we, what we get is a number of results where a piece of artwork is being selected from the wiki art and an emotion that the model Artemis believes that this particular artwork may produce, as well as a little bit of an explanation of why this particular emotion was chosen. Right? So for instance, for this particular artwork here, which we'll have a look at in just a second, it chose sadness. And it says, the poor dogs look so starved. I am sad they may not receive the sausage in the sky. And then if we have a look at the actual image, well, fair enough. It's pretty accurate, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look at some other stuff. Disgust. This woman is so plumped, she looks like a sausage. Fantastic. <laughs> Very opinionated. Let's keep that in mind. Very opinionated. Uh, this woman's hair reminds me of a sausage link. It pretty much does. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. Or, oh, this man's face captures me, then his hands look disgusting, like large sausage fingers. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's pretty good, eh? Once again, keep this in mind, right? All of these um, descriptions as well as the emotions that I just read to you were chosen based on the image input by this machine learning model by Artemis. Pretty cool, eh? So um, Artemis was developed by a team of researchers led by Panos Achiloptas. Panos Achiloptas. And they themselves describe it as a machine learning models, well, as a set of machine learning models, aimed at providing a detailed understanding of the interplay between visual content, its emotional effect, and explanations for the latter in language. Right? So let's try to understand that. They say that this model, or the set of models that they have built, help understand the relationship between a visual content whether it's going to be a piece of artwork like a painting or you know a photography or whatever else. A relationship between that and an emotion that this piece of visual content may produce, right? Whether it's sadness or happiness or disgust or whatnot. And then on top of that, these models will also give us a explanation of why this particular uh, emotion was, was chosen. See, what I actually like about uh, Artemis is that Contrary to how a lot of other, you know, computer vision, like image-based machine learning models are, are built, Artemis kind of focuses more on subjective and sort of sentimental side of images. You know, what emotions does, does an image produce, right? Whereas most of technology built these days in relationship to images is more focused on sort of objective objective facts. Is there a cat in the image, you know? Uh, where are the cars in the image? And they even um, describe it themselves uh, in their paper when they compare, you know, the results provided by Artemis and how um, they produce something they describe affective explanations, which is a 
fair way to put it, as opposed to content-based captions mentioning the word bird in this particular case, right? So here we can obviously see how, yeah, a, various of, uh, a variety of different images has been chosen, uh, you know, in some way related to the word bird, like in, in this case, for instance, it, it produces the sensation of fear. And the explanation goes, this looks like a bird that has been injured and is bleeding, taking a flight. Pretty interesting, eh? As opposed to uh, some of these images taken from uh, Coco captions, such as, a small bird sits on top of a book page. You know, nonetheless impressive, machine learning models that are capable of, you know, of, of making these sort of predictions based on images and then tell you what is in the image, you know, five years ago would have completely blown our heads. These days they are a little bit more common and, and everyday. Um, but, but as you can see, majority of machine learning models produced in relationship to um, you have images, visual content of some sort, so-called computer vision. Are, are more objective and are more factual. Whilst Artemis, it's all about subjective emotional play, like what do we feel when we look at a particular image? So I thought we could have a look at a few more cool examples in Artemis. Frankly, I only did a little bit of research before. I haven't seen a lot of it yet. So we will genuinely do a little bit of exploration into Artemis together. So we have to think that the, these are paintings, not so much photographs, so they've probably been done a while back. Ugly dog. Disgust. The statue that this the statue looks ugly with its combination of a dog and a person. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Amusement. The dog is such an ugly dog that it's almost cute. <laughs> Keep in mind that these are not my opinions that we're talking about here. Okay? This is the AI speaking. I'm just reading it out. Tired man. A sadness. Very oddly shaped face of the man that looks tired and sad. Yep, no doubt. Contentment. The man is gazing to the distance but also looks tired. He does. He does look tired. Angry father. Fear. The father looks as if he is angry at his daughter for wanting a better life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe. Contentment. This mother and father appear to be rearing their children, but, the, but the look on their children's faces looks sad. The mother looks very angry. Hmm. Sadness. The mature man at the top, like the boy's father, seems angry and disapproving. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because that's essentially a study, a, a practice of various forms and, you know, shapes and angles of a human face. But the AI doesn't really see it this way. It thinks of it as a, as a, as a whole, as a piece, and um, it interprets as if there was a person sort of disapproving and, and being angry at somebody over here, and a person in the middle being a child. Pretty cool. Curious woman. Or, oh, the woman is floating and holding a mysterious object. This painting makes me feel very curious. Hmm. Alright. Something else. I'm curious about what the woman may be telling the boy in this painting. Haha. <laughs> Innocent child. I do apologize that I can't think of more interesting prompts at the, at the moment. All I'm trying to do is to encourage you to go and check out the website for yourself. Uh, but what we're trying to do here is to demonstrate how interesting it is to see what this AI model interprets, uh, what, what it thinks about the particular artworks that you know, match the, the search queries that we, that we look for. Amusement. 
It looks like this family is celebrating the first harvest of the season. The child is expressing an innocent joy. <laughs> Are they celebrating the harvest? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe they are. Fear. An innocent child notices a human skull peeking from the top of the basket. Huh. Right? Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, scary, I don't know. But the emotion you could feel is definitely fear. And correctly observing that the child is worried about that skull. Not really coming from the basket, but but, but the skull is there. Fear. It looks like the sky is on fire and this looks like a hunting party which makes me worry for whatever or whoever they are hunting. The colors are what makes this painting. It seems like a beautiful sunset in the forest. Amusement. I feel as if the person in the portrait is trying to be invisible and block out the light with their hand. The center window with light coming through resembles a beautiful sunset. All right. The colors of the guitar and the plate of food looks like something left on a Spanish villa. The largest animal in the ocean has teeth and light beams eyes. Crazy things in the ocean. Right, well, in either case, uh, I just wanted to show you a few little examples so I would encourage you to go and explore Artemis on your own. It is currently hosted on Streamlit. Uh, I'll post a link in the description of this video because it's just a series of numbers to be able to access it. Uh, but alternatively, you can go to the artemisdataset.org where you should be able to find uh, more data about it. And if you do go there, make sure you also check out the videos, uh, especially this one, the eight, uh, 80,000 paintings in eight minutes. Where does this come from, 80,000 paintings? Well, the um, data set used for training of Artemis is actually over 80,000 paintings. They used 81,000 paintings that had 439 annotations, thousands, 439 thousands annotations on these paintings. And so they also collated a little kind of a playthrough various types of paintings. I think pretty much all of the paintings they used uh, on the Artemis project uh, in this little video, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Um, well, in either case, um, kind of wrapping up already, once again, I recommend you go and check Artemis out yourself. The link is in the description. Uh, I just wanted to encourage you uh, by showing you some of these examples, but it's definitely more fun to try it out on your own. But I want to leave you with this one sentence from the conclusion that I think uh, summarizes it quite nicely. The ability to deal computationally with images, emotional attributes, opens an exciting new direction in humor computer communication and interaction. Think about it, right? Understanding how images affect us emotionally indeed maybe produce some sort of exciting new avenues that we could explore in terms of how us humans interact with the computers. So for that alone, I think it's a fantastic project and definitely worth recommending uh, to go and check out at least some of the results they make, as well as possibly going and understanding a little bit more of the technical details of how it was implemented. And yeah, I would love to see more this kind of more of this type of work uh, being published. As like I say, it's quite unusual to see something being done in a field of subjectivity and you know emotions and and all these things that us humans find difficult to describe and you know to put on paper. While you know in here they. They, they exactly try to do that to computationally deal with you know images emotional attributes right yeah well in any case uh, go and check it out I hope you enjoy using it and I see you in the next video bye hey I hope you enjoyed watching this video I unfortunately have to do something that I hoped I would never have to do but sometimes we make mistakes I believe what I was sh showing in this video um, 
is not exactly true. I only realized that after having finished and edited it. Um, I went over the, the content that I'm showcasing here and the Artemis uh, website itself, and I've realized, hold on, I could have been going completely wrong about one thing over here. And the thing is that the examples that we were looking at in the Artemis uh, browser, when I was typing in queries and then going over various emotions and, and the text descriptions for them, um, I'm not sure that they were made by an AI. I found out about Artemis through this uh, newsletter called The Batch. I have my phone with that email here right now. Uh, on that email, they, uh, they have a little segment called How Art Makes AI Feel, which alone kind of points in a very specific direction, right? So here they said that, um, you know, the, the, the team of researchers led, led by Panos Akiloptas constructed a deep learning system to generate subjective interpretations of art, okay? And that last sentence, you know, generating, uh, generate subjective interpretations of art is a hyperlink that takes us directly to that browser that I've been using where we type in search queries and receive various emotions. Um, so that, that's a direct link. And when I was reading through the batch, I went directly to that sub page and started playing around with it and was completely blown away by the capabilities of these seemingly, uh, you know, AI model. And so I was like, hey, this is fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and record a video about it, which I obviously did. And it wasn't until the very end of it when I was once again browsing through the web page, the Artemis dataset web page, uh, which I think already is a pretty good indicator that uh, we should be talking about the data set here a little bit more than the models. So that's definitely a mistake on my end. But nonetheless, on that web page, um, we have a segment where they link back to that browser, the, the Explore um, Artemis uh, browser. And the, the headline there says, you can browse the Artemis annotations here. And then there is a link to, to the browser, to the Explore uh, Artemis browser. So upon clicking on that um, and, and being taken to that place, I kind of stopped myself and started thinking, hold on, hold on. I was led to believe that we're browsing through the results made by the AI models, the neural speakers, uh, that generate these various annotations and emotions. But having read that, I'm thinking, okay, the Artemis is the data set made by humans, made by human annotators, the 81,000 images with 439,000 um, uh, annotations, right? So if we're browsing through the Artemis data set, it probably isn't, as I incorrectly assumed, the results made by the models that they've trained. Even more so, right underneath um, that, that link, there is a little screenshot there, and on that screenshot there is a checkbox that isn't in the current version of, the uh, of that Explore Artemis browser, and that checkbox says, show human annotations. So if we tick it on, we will show humans annotations. And then in parentheses they say, else, neural speaker. So if it's unticked, we will be seeing what the neural speaker is generating, right? This checkbox is not there anymore, which is exactly why I'm not entirely sure whether we actually are making that mistake or not. It could be that we still are browsing the results of the AI, but you know, having read through this, I'm slowly you know, starting to believe that maybe these are actually just the annotations made by humans, in which case the entirety of my video is based on a slightly false assumption. I hope you can see why I made this assumption though. I hope you can see how the wording both in the batch and on the on the Artemis dataset could be slightly ambiguous into um, you know and let someone into believing that we're browsing the results made by the by the model for which I nonetheless apologize. Uh, I should have made that realization uh, sooner than than now. Uh, in fact, the guys from Artemis dataset, they have published uh, their code online, and I did make an attempt after making that realization, I did make an attempt to uh, download that code and try to make it run on my local system so that I could verify whether Artemis uh, models are indeed capable of making the uh, annotations and, and, and predictions that I was showcasing in this video. However, uh, I wasn't successful in, in completing this. Uh, there is a number of, uh, of, of elements of that, of that code that haven't been made uh, public despite being uh, shared in various places. Uh, I can't download them at the moment, so I wasn't capable of actually completing that, that side of it. Nonetheless, if we look through the Artemis dataset uh, website, we can find a number of places in here as much as we can do it in the paper, in the technical paper, where they are very clear and specific about the fact that these annotations were made by the AI. And these are equally impressive and cool as 
just as much as all the other annotations that we were talking about in the video that we just watched. Uh, therefore, you know, I think nonetheless, the, the you know, if we were to be showcasing what the researchers um, of Artemis made, you know, I believe that these examples would be equally cool to talk about. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the browser itself, the Explore Artemis browser, I believe this, these are not the examples made by, uh, by the AI, but these simply are uh, the, the annotations made by humans. So yeah, I wanted to make this short clarification because, well, uh, obviously it's not great to release content that isn't exactly accurate and um, you know you can only imagine how how horrible <laughs> it feels once you finish that entire video and then you realize hold on shit <laughs> I, I'm completely wrong in a majority of it but when you really think about it a lot of the information that I conveyed in the video is still relevant and is still accurate I still believe that what they did was completely uh, incredible and that the Artemis dataset is a very cool project you know trying to approach um, computer vision from the perspective of like sentimental and subjective uh, side rather than the objective side so all that still holds true and you know nonetheless browsing through the annotations we did learn something interesting and potentially this dataset could be used to you know promptly build a system that is able to make all of these super cool predictions that I was mistakenly uh, showing to you today. Uh, like I say, the results that they were getting already uh, seem to be equally impressive and I'm just sorry that I couldn't verify it uh, sooner or that I couldn't get, get it to run on, on my own end and show you those results instead later. Uh, so yeah, I'm keeping the video on, on online for now. I will probably take it down at some point, but uh, you know, it, it takes me quite a lot of time to get these videos up and I have spent you know, a significant portion of my past few weeks uh, putting this together. So I will publish it and I do apologize that it is in this incorrect form. I hope you can uh, excuse me for doing this mistake. Uh, and yeah, I hope you nonetheless enjoyed it and I will, I will see you in the next video. I promise that next time I'll be sure to do a little bit of more of a proper research and verify the sources that I base my videos on. Anyway, have a good one. <laughs>